So uh, in today's class, we are going to talk about insurance contract. And uh, if time permits, we will talk also about how to file claims. So I'm sure you have learned about contract. Can someone tell me what is a contract or what is a valid contract? Okay, or if, I'm sure you've studied contract law. So if someone can answer me what is a contract. Okay, let me just brush up your memory. <coughs> Sorry. A contract is an agreement supported by a consideration. So just to brush up your memory, offer plus acceptance is an agreement, right? An agreement which is supported by a consideration or fortified by a consideration is a contract. So basically, an agreement that is supported by consideration and it is it has to be enforceable in law, right? So the enforceability part of it, you know, uh, propels that agreement to the position of becoming a contract. Let me repeat it in simple terms. Uh, did you study contract law? Yes or no? Hello? Did you yes, study contract we law? studied it. Yes. For me, in my university, I yes. studied it in the Hear third you. semester. Um, I think the problem is from my end. Yeah. Please tell me. Did you uh, study contract law? Yes. Where I actually remember in my university, I studied it in the first uh, third semester. Great. My bachelor. That's nice. So uh, let me just remind all of you. As Ruvida has already confirmed that you studied contract law, so I'll not go into the detail of it. But of course, just for the purpose of insurance contract, let me just try to, uh, you know, once again, reiterate whatever I've spoken earlier. Uh, what is a contract? Before that, we should understand what is an agreement. Offer plus acceptance or offer along with acceptance is an agreement. An agreement which is fortified with consideration and has the factor of enforceability in law, that is, an agreement which is enforceable in law, is a contract. So this is just in simple words. Now, when we're talking about insurance, insurance contracts, it is a contract, it is an agreement where there is an offer, there is an acceptance, there is a consideration that is paid in the form of premium and it is enforceable in law so therefore we call it as a contract so it is a document that represents an agreement basically between the insurance company and the insured so therefore what are the four elements that you can see here is offer acceptance consideration as well as enforceability in law when we're talking about enforceability in law again to brush up your memory about contract the contracts which are entered into by Parties who have the capacity to contract or parties who are competent to contract are the parties who can enforce the contract. So, you know, the, the competency of parties also plays an important role. For example, just again to brush up your memory about whether a minus contract is a contract or a contract that is, uh, you know, um, entered into by uh, an insane person or a mentally weak person, whether it's a valid contract. So I, I'll not go into uh, contract law, but just to make you understand about insurance contract. So insurance contracts are contracts. They have the element of offer. They have the element of acceptance. They have consideration. And at, it has a legal purpose. It, there are competent parties who are involved. And therefore, it has got the enforceability factor that is involved. Now let's go to our slides. So insurance contract is a contract between the insurer and the insured. Insurer is the insurance company and the insured is a party who has already sought the insurance. So the insurer undertakes to pay or compensate the loss that has occurred, the loss or damage that has occurred to the party who has sought the insurance and is covered under the insurance policy. 
So the party who obtains and or is covered under the insurance policy contract is the insured. And the insured is expected to pay a fixed amount of money on the happening of a certain event. Or by virtue of a contract, he's expected to pay premiums, which could be considered as, you know, a consideration in terms of contract law. Let us refer to the law in Spain, just, you know, just to understand the concept of uh, insurance contract in the international perspective. Article 1 of Insurance Contract Act 50 of 1980 defines a contract of insurance as a contract the virtue of which the insurer agrees for a specified consideration that is premium and then an event occurs, the risk of which is the object of coverage. For example, any example of risk that, could, that you could give me? Accident is an example of risk. Fire is a risk. So the risk of which the object of coverage to indemnify, that means to make good the loss indemnification within the agreed limits, the damage suffered by the insured or to pay a capital sum, a rent or other agreed compensation. Next, referring to the law in United Kingdom. So basically, there is no statutory definition of insurance contract. However, in the case of Prudential versus Commissioners of Inland Revenue, it's a very old case way back to 1904 and which was decided by the king's bench so uh, there was justice channel while referring to an insurance contract he observed that namely a contract it is a, namely a contract whereby one party the insurer promises to return for a money consideration the premium to pay the other party that is the insured a sum of money or to provide him with a corresponding benefit upon the occurrence of one or more specified events. Talking about Finland, under the Finnish civil law, insurance contract is said to be based on an agreement or a contract between the insurance company and the policy holder. So after the conclusion of the insurance contract, the insurance company is to transfer the insurance policy to the policy holder. The insurance policy document should contain the most relevant points of insurance contract and the terms of the policy and all other requirements stipulated in the Finnish Insurance Contract Act. Now, talking about Greece, Article 1 of Law 2496 of 97 states that by insurance contract and insurance undertaking, the insurer undertakes to make payments or, if specifically agreed, to make provision in kind to the other party that is a policy holder or to a third party in return for a premium on the occurrence of an event on which it has been agreed that the insurer's obligation depends, that is the insured event. Now talking about Germany, now Article 1 of Insurance Contract Act BVG, it deals with the main obligations of both parties, it says, they say that by making a contract of insurance, the insurer undertakes to cover a certain risk of the policyholder or a third party by paying a benefit up to the date on the occurrence of the agreed insured event. The policyholder is obligated to pay the agreed contribution, that is insurance premium, to the insurer. Now talking about India. In India, the definition attributed to an insurance contract is that of a definition of a contract under the Indian Contract Act. That is, um, under the Indian Contract Act, uh, just to let you know what is a contract, an agreement that is enforceable in law is a contract. So an insurance agreement, Talking now coming back to your slide, an insurance agreement between the insurer and the insured that is enforceable by law is an insurance contract. So the difference here is they've just attributed the definition of contract to an insurance agreement. And they just say that it is an agreement between the insurer and the insured that is enforceable by law in an insurance contract. Now, the primary law that governs insurance in India is Insurance Act 1938. That is the Insurance Act and the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority Act. 1999, that is the IRDA Act. So this is uh, the global perspective to which we'll talk about even, we'll add on and talk about, about the United States of America. Now, 
With respect to United States of America, referring to it, dating back to 1944, insurance in USA was not considered a commerce. It was not considered a business. Thereby, it was governed by the general federal laws. Subsequently, there was a judicial precedent. There was a case law that came up that stretched the scope of insurance law. In United States versus Southeastern Underwriters Association, the Supreme Court held that Congress could regulate insurance transactions that were truly interstate. The ruling in this case made the insurance industry subject to federal regulations that is central regulation and provided the legislators the authority over regional, interstate, and international commerce, including insurance policies sold out for each state. Consequently, then, Congress enacted the McCarran ferguson Act, 15 U.S.C., which permitted states to have their own insurance laws. However, the Sherman Act, the Clayton Act, and Federal Trade Commission Act were made applicable, <clears throat> excuse me, Um, yeah, so I was talking about the Federal Trade Commission Act were made applicable to the insurance business to the extent that it was not covered or it was unregulated by the state law. Now, a special reference to McCarran Ferguson Act, it states uh, that states are granted the power to regulate the insurance industry and state insurance laws override most federal statutes. That means um, each state has its own insurance law and that overrides the central statute, the federal statute. While some federal laws such as tax laws are always commanding. Thereby the factor that needs to be examined primarily in an insurance dispute is that whether the insurance covers a business, <clears throat> sorry, Or the, <clears throat> sorry, or the peripherals. And if the insurance covers business, then state laws apply. And if the insurance covers the peripherals, that is the other surrounding factors, such as tax, etc., then the federal laws apply. So according to this Ferguson Act, they said that insurance laws normally in a particular state is governed by the state insurance laws. So there are two types of laws, one at the state level, one at the federal level or the central level. So what they are saying here is state insurance laws override federal statutes or federal laws. Now, how do we understand which law is applicable in USA under the McCarran, McCarran uh, Ferguson Act? Now, which law is applicable? Now, if, you know, the dispute of insurance, if it covers a business, that means, uh, you know, uh, if it covers a business, then the state laws apply. But it covers the other, you know, factors or the peripherals, such as tax, etc., then the federal laws apply. So the Competitive Health Insurance Reform Act of 2020 restricted anti-competitive behavior and insurers who are engaged in anti-competitive behavior would be liable under federal law. So this is, um, you know, with reference to USA, United States of America. Then what about UAE, United Arab Emirates? Now, insurance contracts in UAE are governed by the UAE Federal Laws Number no. 5 of 1985 called the Civil Code. And the primary legislation on the establishment and regulation of insurance organization, that is Law 6 of 2007. Now, procuring a contract of insurance without an insurable interest is haram or prohibited under Sharia law. That means they say there must be the factor of insurable interest as per the UAE insurance laws. However, the concept of insurable interest is not clearly defined in the law, except a mention in the commercial maritime law, which expressly prohibits anyone from benefiting from an insurance policy unless they have a lawful interest in the subject matter of the policy. So this reference may be extended even to other insurance policy. Now, referring to the Sultanate of Oman, 
In Oman, insurance contracts operate as a contract of adhesion where the insured is bound by the terms and conditions set forth in the insurance policy contract by the insurer. So there is basically little or no scope for negotiation under the concept of adhesion. So the policyholders must adhere to the policy terms that are reflected in the insurance contract. So insurance contracts cannot be easily terminated by the insurer unless there is an order from the court of law to that effect. So this was held in one of the cases where the court held that it was not possible for the insurer to negate its obligation to cover the insured risks unless a specific judgment to that effect was issued by the court. So thereby, so these were all the definitions that I've given you in the international perspective and how each country determines uh, how they would handle an insurance contract and uh, the, the relevance or the weightage that they place to an insurance contract and the concept that involves in an insurance contract. So thereby, an insurance contract is a special contract that, the, that has the elements of normal commercial contract where the insured seeks to elevate his loss and get compensation. A life insurance policy may be seen even as an investment at times, and it is also considered as a contract of adhesion, since why? Adhesion, that means the policyholder has to, has to adhere to the terms and conditions that are attached to the insurance policy. So we call it as a contract of adhesion. And furthermore, it has there is no scope of bargaining or negotiation. That is, you know, the terms and conditions are just thrust upon the policyholder. That means you have to abide by these policies. Now here, the insured is bound by the statutory policy terms and conditions that are mentioned in the policy contract. So an insurance contract establishes the relation and the agreement between the insured and the insurer, where the parties agree to abide by the terms, conditions, and warranties expressed in the insurance contract. So the insurance contract acts as a protective risk device against losses or damages that may be apprehended in the regular course of transaction, business, or utility. What are the elements of insurance contract? It certainly involves the normal elements of general contract and specific elements. So you could bifurcate the subject or the, the, uh, the question of element of insurance contract to the element of general contract and to special elements. Now, what are those general elements? It has offer, acceptance, valid consideration, capacity to contract, lawful object and lawful purpose. So thereby, there must be a valid offer. Again, th this is something that you have already studied in contract law. So it must have a valid offer that, that is acceptable to form an agreement, which agreement should be enforceable in nature. For an agreement to be considered enforceable, it must be made by parties competent to contract. The element of consensus ad idem or meeting of minds. And there must be a valid consideration and the purpose of the contract must be lawful. That means the purpose of the contract must not be illegal or unlawful. Now, like for example, can you give me an unlawful contract example? For example, uh, can a smuggler um, procure an insurance policy and say, in case my dealings fail, then the insurance company should indemnify the loss that has occurred to me? Can he do that? Obviously, the answer is no. Why? Because a purpose is unlawful. Smuggling is illegal and it is against the law. It is an offense rather. So therefore, the purpose of the contract must be lawful. Consideration in an insurance contract is in the form of premium. That is premium that is paid by the insured to the insurer. That is to secure the policy. Now, apart from that, the other special clauses that need to be there in an insurance contract are one, indemnity clause. So the concept of indemnity is, uh, you know, a significant concept when we are talking about insurance contract. I remember I, you know, spoke about indemnity, uh, you know, concept of uh, adhesion in my last class. So what is this indemnity clause? In simple terms, indemnity means to make good the loss. So this is an essential clause in an insurance contract. 
all insurance contracts except life insurance policy have an indemnity clause because personal insurance risks are not calculable and cannot be estimated. Thereby, life insurance contracts are not indemnity contracts. So, but, you know, life insurance contracts can be called as contracts of adhesion. Just, uh, you know, some time back, I referred to life insurance contract as a contract of adhesion. But all of the contracts would have the, el the element of indemnity, except life insurance contract. So under this clause, the insurance company, the insurer covenants to make good the loss, compensate the loss, damage that is caused to the insured within the scope or ambit of the policy. So the insured or the policy holder must prove that there is an apprehension of loss in case of occurrence of the contingent event to be covered under the scope of the policy. The compensation that will be approved for disbursal by the insurer, the insurance company, will be to the extent of total amount of insurance policy obtained. Indemnification cannot be more than the amount insured. And if the insured gets more amount than the actual loss, the insurer or the insurance company is bestowed with the right to reclaim the additional amount and that is disbursed back. Now, if the insured additionally receives a compensation amount from the third party after being fully indemnified by the insurer, then the insurer will have the right to claim the additional amount that is received by the insured from the third party. The next clause that would find its place in an insurance contract is a premium clause that operates as a consideration in the concept of contract. So premium clause specifies the amount of premium that needs to be paid by the insured or the party who obtains the insurance policy. Premiums one, once paid will not be refunded. And uh, however, there are certain exceptions wherein such an exception is mentioned in the policy. Now, what is insurable interest? We discussed it um, at length during the last class. But just to, uh, you know, just uh, run through it. Insurable interest is a nexus or the relationship of the insured or the subject matter with the policy holder. So there must be an insurable interest which is examined so as to process the policy or the claim. That means there has to be an insurable interest. Next is the proximate cause, the most closest cause, the most, um, you know, the cause that is more proximate and which is not distant. So as to determine whether the cause of the loss is the peril that has been insured. Next, or the cause of the loss is the damage that has been insured. Next is um, utmost good faith. It's also called as the concept of ubreme fide, that is an insurance contract is founded on the principle of absolute good faith. That means wherein the parties to the contract are obligated to, to disclose all the material facts pertaining to the contract, subject matter of the insurance, and no material fact must be withheld. Next is the limitation clause that will specify the limit or the extent to which the insurance company will cover the loss. Next is the exclusion clause, which states the conditions or the occurrences that the insurance company will not cover or compensate the loss. Next, we have warranty clause. That means that would express certain conditions and promises in the insurance contract, which may be implied or even expressly stated. And the last one is corporate pay clause, this clause find its, finds its place in a health insurance contract where the insurance is expected, the insured is expected to co-pay whole obtaining any medical service as per the terms that are mentioned in the health insurance policy contract. So the percentage of co-payment may vary depending upon the type of health insurance. So in case we get disconnected, please join back. Okay, so 
we have some other clauses that is the assignment clause. Assignment clause, it simply means that um, insurance policies are not always assignable. As assignable, that means it cannot be transferred to any other person. For example, life insurance policies um, may be assignable, but not other insurance policies. So assignment clause does not normally permit assignment of the policy unless the insurance policy expressly permits it. For example, life insurance policies are assignable. However, for fire insurance policies, if the contract permits assignment, then the effect of the assignment will be let, uh, will be or will lead to a new contract in entirety. So again, under normal circumstances, insurance policy is not assignable except it specifically provides in a particular contract, but generally life insurance policies are assignable by nature, but other kind of insurance policies are not assignable unless otherwise expressly mentioned in the contract. Next is subrogation clause. Subrogation clause permits the insurance company to obtain recompensation from a third party who has caused the loss to the insured after compensating the loss of the insured. Next is a cooperation clause. This clause, under this clause, in fact, it seeks the assurance from the insured part that the party would render all required assistance that may be required in case of an investigation process in a claim. So the insured is expected to divulge or reveal all relevant information, necessary reports and documents that may be available to prove a legitimate claim and not procrastinate or not delay. So the, you know, the insured is obligated to cooperate with the insurance company or the insurer, you know, and, you know, render all assistance possible so as to, you know, participate in investigating a particular claim that the insurer that the insured has filed with the insurance company so therefore some of the elements of the insurance contract so here we have studied general elements as well as specific elements and uh, general elements are just uh, you know author acceptance and so on and some special elements that has to be there. We've spoken about the indemnity clause, the premium clause, insurable interest, proximate cause, utmost good faith, limitation clause, exclusion clause, warranty clause, copay clause, assignment clause, subrogation clause, cooperation clause. So We have studied what is an insurance contract. We learned it in the international perspective. We studied in the, uh, you know, in the context of Spain. We refer to the law in the UK, in Finland, in Greece, Germany, India, USA, UAE, and the Sultanate of Oman. And we spoke about elements of contract, uh, bifurcated it, into the elements of general contract and specific elements. Uh, just take two minutes break and join back. We will do the next chapter that is filing of insurance claim. Just take two minutes break and come back. <laughs> 